Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chahan. Welcome to another episode of Courts Today by Live Law, where we bring you the latest developments from all courts across India. Starting with an update from the Constitution Bench of the Supreme Court, which today held as illegal the process followed by Kerala High Court in fixing a cutoff mark on the basis of Viva Vose for the selection of district judges in March 2017. The bench comprising CGI Chandrachud, Justice P. S. Narsimha, Justice Rishikesh Roy, Justice Pankaj Mithal and Justice Manoj Mishra was hearing a batch of petitions filed by 11 candidates aspiring to be selected as district judges in the state of Kerala in pursuance of a 2015 notification. A reference was made to the bench on the issue whether appointing authorities can change the norms of selection during the middle of the process or after the process has been completed, as there was conflicting judgments on the point. The court noted that cutoff was fixed by the High Court after the conduct of the Viva Vose, which was manifestly arbitrary. However, the court refrained from invalidating the selection of candidates in view of the fact that six years had passed since their appointment, during which the appointed candidates had performed judicial functions. But at the same time, in a relief to the petitioners, the court clarified that their failure to get selected will not be treated as a reflection on their merit and that it will not come in their way in future selections. In another update from the Constitution Bench, today the hearing of a reference which raises the issue whether a person who is ineligible to be appointed as an arbitrator can appoint an arbitrator or not was deferred for two months. Let me tell you here, a 16-member expert committee has been constituted by the Ministry of Law and Justice in June this year to examine the working of arbitration law in India and recommend reforms in the Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1996. The step was taken to limit the requirement for parties to seek judicial intervention by approaching courts. As the issues which have been raised before the constitution bench will also come within the remit of the committee, thus the court considered it fit to defer the matter till the committee gives its report. Stay tuned. In another update, the Supreme Court today adjourned the hearing in the bail plea of former JNU scholar and activist Umar Khalid, who as you know has been arrested under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act for his alleged involvement in the larger conspiracy surrounding the communal violence that broke out in February 2020 in the Indian capital. Khalid has been behind bars since September 2020, awaiting his trial. A bench comprising Justices A.S. Bopanna and M.M. Sondaresh was considering Khalid's plea challenging the decision of the Delhi High Court, which denied him bail last year. During the brief hearing today, the counsel for the Delhi Police sought more time to file a counter affidavit. Accordingly, the bench agreed to adjourn the bail hearing till Monday, that is 24th of July. Next is an update on a service matter. The Supreme Court has held that act of regularizing the services of only some employees and not of other entitled employees is discriminatory and violative of Article 14 of the Constitution. In the present case, the Chief Commissioner of Income Tax had found 65 employees entitled to regularization of employment, but only 35 could be regularized because only 35 posts were available. The employees filed contempt petition alleging that the departments by not regularizing their services had thereby committed contempt of court. But the petition was dismissed by the High Court. Thus, the appellants filed an appeal before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court bench comprising Justice B. R. Gawai and Justice J. B. Pardewala has directed the Income Tax Department to regularize the services of the remaining entitled employees from the date on which the services of other 35 employees were regularized and to pay the back wages and other consequential benefits within a period of six months. To read the full story, you can visit our website at livelaw.in. And now an update on a case relating to land scam. Land scams are common in India. Not only do they cause financial losses to individuals and investors, but also disrupt 
development projects erode public trust and hinder socio-economic progress. The Supreme Court has directed the Commissioner of Police Gurugram to constitute a special investigation team to investigate a land scam that involves officials at the Office of Land Registering Authorities and other accused persons allegedly deceiving an elderly NRI couple. The Apex Court categorically stated that the Commissioner of Police is personally responsible for monitoring the day-to-day -day investigation. The SIT will be headed by an officer not below the rank of DSP and will have two inspectors as its members. While expanding the scope of the inquiry, the bench comprising Justice Surya Kant and Justice C.T. Ravi Kumar granted liberty to the SIT to subject the accused persons as well as the officers at the sub-registrar's office to investigation and complete it within two months' time. The Apex Court was of the view that in the present case, if there is any involvement of the land mafia, the same should be come to forefront through an unimpaired investigation. The Supreme Court has invoked Article 142 of the Constitution to direct RBI to extend the benefit of reservation in promotion to an employee with disability who was denied the same for a long time. The challenge in the petition relates to securing promotion to the post of assistant manager in the RBI under Persons with Disabilities Act of 1995. So in 2003, the employee had appeared in the All India Merit Test to secure promotion to a class one post. But he fell short of the qualifying marks by three marks. He made representations seeking condemnation of the shortfall marks, which were not considered. The Supreme Court bench comprising Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt and Justice Dipankar Datta has granted notional promotion to him to the post of Assistant Manager Grade A from the date of presentation of his writ petition before the Bombay High Court that is in September 2006. The bench granted two months time to complete the process and four months time to compute and release the monetary benefits accruing to him. The National Investigation Agency Court, Kochi, has found six of the 11 accused persons guilty in the sensational Professor T.J. Joseph hand chopping case of 2010. Justice Anil Baskar pronounced the verdict in the second phase of the trial today. The background is a question in an exam set by Professor Joseph, the former head of Malayalam Department of Newman College, contained a passage that was alleged to have insulted Prophet Muhammad. Subsequently, in July 2010, a group of men attacked him and his family while they were going to the church and chopped off his right hand and stabbed him in the left leg. The case was initially investigated by the Kerala police and was subsequently taken over by the NIA in 2011. The accused persons were charged with offences under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, the Explosives Act and criminal conspiracy, grievous bodily harm with a deadly weapon and criminal intimidation under the Indian Penal Code. The court will pronounce the sentence at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Significantly observing that pets fulfill emotional deficit occurred due to broken relationships, a magistrate court in Mumbai has awarded interim maintenance to a 55-year-old woman for her three Rottweiler dogs in a domestic violence case. Metropolitan Magistrate Komal Singh Rajput ordered the woman's husband to pay 50,000 rupees per month as interim maintenance, taking into account her financial background and the care and upkeep of her pet dogs. The court also observed that after their separation, the husband's failure to arrange for means of survival for his wife, who has no source of income and is completely dependent on him, constitutes economic violence. The Delhi High Court today granted bail to former Aam Admi Party councillor Tahir Hussain in five different cases registered against him in connection with 2020 North East Delhi riots. However, Hussain will still remain in judicial custody in other FIRs registered against him. Justice Anish Dayal allowed the bail pleas which were moved by Hussain in 2020 and 2021. 
Let me tell you a total of 11 FIRs were registered against Tahir Hussain in connection with the 2020 riots, including a UAPA case accusing him and others of being behind a larger conspiracy to commit the riots. The Delhi High Court has dismissed an application seeking condonation of delay of about 28 years for filing an appeal against an acquittal order of 1995 in a case of anti-Sikh riots dating back to 1991. The division bench of Justice Suresh Kumar Kaith and Justice Neena Bansal Krishna said that if the prosecution or the complainant were aggrieved by the judgment of acquittal, there was nothing which prevented them from filing the appeal. According to the prosecution, the SIT in its report in 2019 had recommended that the appeal could be filed against the acquittal. And due to COVID-19 pandemic, the appeal could not be finalized as the file had to pass various channels, which resulted in further delay. However, the court said even after the report of the SIT, there was a delay of about four years for which no cogent explanation had been given. Accordingly, the application was dismissed. And lastly, the Bar Council of Uttarakhand has submitted before the Uttarakhand High Court that it shall not charge beyond 1750 rupees for entertaining complaints filed against advocates for their alleged professional misconduct unless its proposal to increase the fee to rupees 5500 is approved by the Bar Council of India. The undertaking was given before the bench of Chief Justice Vipin Sanghi and Justice Rakesh Thaplial, which is presently hearing a petition challenging the hike in the fee charges for filing disciplinary cases before the State Bar Council against erring advocates. Thank you for joining us. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us.